in any country at any time and kill millions of people because we're not prepared, because we're still vulnerable. From our perspective, we saw ourselves as a front line. Pathology is the only way you know if you're ever infected or not. Are we going through SARS again? When I started reading what was happening in Wuhan and in China, it did make me think just, you know, how big is this going to get? If you don't know what you've got, you can't deal with it. I mean, it's the greatest challenge of, of, of our age. Make no mistake about it. This really is um, the, the biggest challenge that we've faced. The downstream implications of that are that if it's seeded in some places, then it's bound to have reached Australia. Went straight to micro and talked to my microbiologist colleagues to get their take on it, and they were quite concerned. They said, well, look, this is likely to be the first of a number, and we really need to prepare ourselves for this. It's not often scientists get excited. Awesome. So it's definitely great. So we've got it. Fantastic. The people on the ground, in the laboratories, in responsible positions, saying, hey, this is a problem. We won't wait till we get an order from above to do this. We'll start doing it. It was concerning time, you know, because we couldn't see how the companies would, would be able to develop assays in a timely manner. And put very, very simply, without a test result, there's no public health action. Once they get into a laboratory, you then have to evaluate how they perform. Um, that usually takes at least six months, and we turned it around in a few weeks. And so it was you know, quite an incredible effort. Australia's done brilliantly, given that it was able to isolate SARS-CoV-2 fairly early. Uh, diagnostic devices were developed uh, pretty early. And then as commercial devices came online, uh, we really got into the swing of things and the stride of testing. It wouldn't have been possible if we weren't part of a, a greater team of pathologists. If we all worked as islands, it wouldn't work. The scale of the testing, I think, was what took everybody by particular surprise. To have it set up and, and you know, going um, so early, and I think it's one of the reasons we haven't had huge numbers of cases here. Massive health decisions are being made on these tests all the time and that's one of the most important places to be thinking about what, what are the risks of us getting this test wrong, what are the risks of us, us going down the wrong path with how we set, it, set this up. The work of pathologists and med lab scientists has ensured that turnaround time is on average around 24 hours. SARS-CoV-2 takes up about 80 or 90 percent of our work now. About 10 times more than we would ever normally do. And then in August when we had our second outbreak start, within three days we tested 25 and a half thousand. there's one thing that we should have learned by now, it's to expect the unexpected. And so I think if any of us said, oh, this is over, you know, thank God that we've emerged from the second wave and it's all over, that would be an extremely foolhardy thing uh, to do. There's lots of things that we've done much better in Australia and that is very dependent on laboratory performance. This, this outbreak has absolutely made pathology and pathologists become more innovative. You know, as a lab, we're, we're pretty exhausted, but very proud of the work that we've been doing. Nobody uh, shirked from their responsibilities. They, they all kept turning up, which I think was a wonderful thing. I, I think everybody has just been overwhelmed with the sense of achievement and um, amazing job that these people have done. The college has been critical in this whole process as of, you know, speaking out early. Have you ever experienced a sort of cohesiveness like this before? Not on this level, no. Incredibly proud to be a microbiology pathologist. It's, um, you know, it's an incredibly important field. 
Uh, really, I could not be more proud of the, the, the team in the laboratory that I lead. I want to say that it, it's been a, an impressive journey of something that I, I don't know if I'll experience again. We have tremendous tools. We've got tremendous people. By having good contact tracing, good public health, good laboratory facility, you can keep it under control and keep it at low levels. And that's what we're going to have to do for the next year or two or more.